Hi everyone, my name is Donald O'Leary. I'm a research scientist on the science education team here at NEON, and today I wanted to give you a brief overview of NEON's spatial design and geospatial data. So let's get started. First of all, NEON has separated the conterminous 48 states, Alaska, Hawaii, and Puerto Rico into 20 different ecoclimatic domains. Now this was done using a multivariate clustering analysis of such factors as incoming precipitation, average annual air temperature, and other ecologically important factors. Uh, and after we distinguished this area into 20 different domains, we found the locations for each one of our field sites that best represents the variety of climate and ecology that can take place in those domains. So for places such as the Northeast, uh, those field sites are really very representative of the entire region. However, for places like the Desert Southwest and the Colorado Rockies and Plateau, uh, those regions are so incredibly diverse that each one of those field sites is not entirely able to represent the entire domain. So that concept of representativeness does vary throughout our observatory, and it's something to take note of when you're applying our information uh, for your own research. So we have several sources of NEON spatial data, uh, including our spatial data and maps and our field site information. I've kind of shown how to navigate to those through our navigation options on our webpage in the blue text there. You will download coordinates with data as you get it either from our data portal or through our API. And if you want higher precision uh, UTM easting and northing coordinates, those are available through our GeoNeon package. Uh, there's a good tutorial on how to use that if you search GeoNeon on our website, uh, but I won't get into that too much for right now. So let's talk about our aquatic field sites. First of all, we have two or three different types of field sites and two different types of moving water field sites. We have our streams and our rivers. And these are set up in a fairly similar way, except that for our streams, the ones where we can have a field scientist walk across them, uh, we have an upstream and a downstream sensor uh, in these sites. And we also have riparian assessment strips, these kind of dark green transects across the stream where our scientists go through and collect observations on the different types of flora and fauna that exist in those, um, in those zones. We also have groundwater wells, and this blue square is a meteorological station that we have across this reach of stream. If the stream gets too big and it's not safe for someone to walk across, then we call it a river. And we'll have a buoy out in the middle of the river instead of our upstream and downstream sensors. But otherwise, uh, the field site layout for streams and ri rivers is fairly similar. However, for our lakes, uh, things get a bit different. We have a buoy, again, in the middle of the lake, and generally in the lake's deepest location. But we have two other sensor sites with these uh, yellow circles with an L in them. The L here stands for the littoral zone, and these sensors are uh, in places close to the edge of the lake where sunlight can actually reach the bottom of the lake and uh, illuminate the subsurface there. So uh, these lakes also, of course, have groundwater wells and meteorological stations, as well as our riparian assessment zones surrounding them. Our terrestrial field sites switch things up a bit, where we have our tower indicated in the blue square here, and the tower's prevailing airshed defines uh, the region where we monitor our tower base plots and some of our soil base plots and our soil array. Um, we have a very intensive monitoring location nearby the tower, but then we also have these distributed sites uh, across the field site. So these uh, little white squares are our distributed base plots, and those occur across all of the different land cover types as is indicated by the background covers on this map here. Let's talk a little bit more about our terrestrial observed data. So one aspect of this is our small mammal trap. Uh, so we put out a grid of small mammal traps um, in these different uh, sites. And you can use the GeoNeon package, again, to get highly precise easting and northing coordinates for each, each one of these traps. Uh, we also do a vegetation survey where we measure all of the trees greater than 10 centimeters dbh uh, in 40 by 40 meter plots across all of the uh, base and dis or tower and distributed base plots. Our terrestrial instrument data is also very interesting. Uh, most charismatically, we have our instruments located on our neon flux towers. These towers are designed to be a bit taller than the vegetation that they're monitoring, so they're at different heights depending on each ecosystem. 
and each one of these towers has multiple levels above the ground where we collect information. And that's located in the Z offset uh, attribute of each one of these data sets. Our soil plots measure in the opposite direction where they're going down into the earth. And uh, this number five here is a soil moisture sensor. Here's a zoom in on our soil moisture sensors. You can see that we have different uh, monitoring locations at different depths in the soil surface. And this is also represented by that Z offset uh, in a depth in meters for these measurements. So that is our brief overview for now. Of course, we have much more information available on our website. And if you ever have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Thanks for your time.